Okay, so in this session, I'm going to summarize the complete chapter on basic geometrical ideas. And I'll use a mind map to summarize the whole chapter and just quickly go through all the points that we covered in the chapter on basic geometrical ideas. So our first discussion was about what do we mean by geometry? And we discussed that geometry comes from the Greek word geometron, in which geo means earth and metron means measurement. So it has to do with measurement of the matter or the objects around us. And uh, we also discussed that there are numerous applications of geometry. Uh, you can find a lot of applications of geometry in art, architecture, measurement of lengths and so on. I mean there are numerous applications which you would find. Then we moved on to discuss the most fundamental concept of the point in geometry and we understood that point determines a location. Some of the examples of a point are the tip of a needle, the tip of a very sharpened pencil and the tip of a compass. And how do we represent a point? We simply use a dot to represent a point. And if there are different points, then we identify them using the different letters from the alphabet. So that were our discussions on the concept of a point. Then we came to the next concept of a line segment. So what is a line segment? It is the shortest straight path between two points. And we can also say that a line segment is made up of finite number of points that is if we take two points and then just connect all the points on the shortest path between these two then what we get is a line segment the examples that you can have for a line segment are the edge of a box a matchstick a tube light an edge of a book or there are there are several examples that you would find on a line segment and how do we represent a line segment we label the two endpoints of the line segment. So if we have two points as AB, then we represent as AB with a bar on the top of A and B. So that was our discussion about line segments. Then we came to the concept of a line. And a line is different from line segment in the sense that it extends indefinitely in both the directions. A line segment just has two points. It terminates at two points. Whereas a line will extend in both the direction and uh, uh, we also understood that a line doesn't have any end point it has infinite points uh, within it and in order to uh, represent a line we need minimum two points so if we want to represent a line what we do is we label any two points on a line and then we write it as for example if you have two points a and b you write a and b with a double sided arrow on top of it or we can also use a small letter to denote line for example L M and N. So that was our discussion around the concept of line. Then we understood the concept of intersecting lines. If there are two lines which have a single common point then those two lines are said to be intersecting each other. The examples are crossing roads where you have a, a, a cross there and then the letter X of the alphabet. These are the most common examples that you can find about the intersecting lines. Then we discuss the concept of parallel lines and uh, put it simply parallel lines are lines that just never meet. The examples of parallel lines are railway tracks or the two opposite edges of a tabletop. They are always parallel. They will never ever meet the two opposite edges of a ruler. And how do we represent the parallel lines? We represent as AB parallel CD or M1 parallel to M2. Please note that in this, you also need to put a double sided arrow on the two sides. So that was our discussion about the parallel lines. Then we moved on to discuss the concept of a ray. Now a ray, if you just cut a line into two parts, then what you get is a Ray. So that is basically a line has a single a ray has a one start point and no end point. So you can say that a ray extends indefinitely in one direction. 
we can say that ray is a portion of a line and it has infinite points that is because even though it has a start point but it doesn't have any end point hence it will have infinite points and how do we represent a ray in that we just take the start point followed by another point on the ray and we just uh, put a single arrow single sided arrow on the top of the letters so that is how we uh, denote the ray so that was our discussion on the ray then we learned about the curves so curve in mathematics and geometry is anything that is not straight and uh, to put it into better words we can say that any 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 object that is drawn without lifting pencil can be called as a curve and it shouldn't be straight however there are three types of curves that we studied one is a simple curve a simple curve simply means that it doesn't cross there are no crossings of the curve and then we have an open curve which means that open curve doesn't enclose any region in the space and then we understood the concept of a closed curve and we and when we say a curve is closed it simply means that it encloses a region in space and then we understood that the interior of a curve means there is a point within the enclosed region in the curve and boundary is a point on the curve and interior with the boundary is called as a region of the curve and an exterior of a curve is any point which is outside the enclosed region of the curve so that was our discussion on the curve then we discussed a very important concept of the polygons now a polygons are simple closed figures made up only of line segments please note simple which means they do not cross each other closed it means they they enclose a region and they are made up of only line segments then we define the terminology related to the polygons so there are sides sides are the line segments that form the polygons then we have vertices in the polygons so it is nothing but a meeting point of a pair of sides then we have adjacent sides they are the sides which have a common end point then we have adjacent vertices in a polygon which are nothing but the end points of a same side they are called adjacent vertices and then we also understood about the diagonals so diagonals are the line segments that join the non adjacent vertices so this was our discussion about the polygons then we discussed the concept of angles and uh, angles are uh, made when there are corners okay the, the properties of angles that we studied are that they are made up of two rays which start from a common end point and the two rays are called arms or the sides of the angle and the common end point from where both the rays start they are called as vertex and how do we name the angles uh, we did a discussion on naming the angles and we name the angle in such a way that the vertex is always in the middle so we use three uh, letters that is for example angle a b and c where b is going to be the vertex and we just do not use the vertex to avoid confusions when we have multiple angles and then we also discuss the concept of the interior and the exterior of angles so exterior would be any point which is not enclosed within the region of the uh, within the region which is enclosed by angles since angles extend indefinitely in one direction then we understood the concept of a triangle now triangle is a polygon with the least number of sides and basically it's a three sided polygon as the name suggests so so a, a triangle has three angles and three sides and it also has an interior and an exterior so that was our discussion about triangle then we understood the concept of quadrilateral so quadrilateral is nothing but a four sided polygon and we always name it cyclically so we also understood the concept of the adjacent sides and adjacent angles of a quadrilateral and the opposite sides and opposite angles of a quadrilateral and then our last discussion on the basic geometrical ideas was about the circle so a circle is defined as a path of a point moving at the same distance from another fixed point we understood the concepts of center which is the fixed point radius which is the fixed distance from the point from the fixed point and circumference is the border or the periphery of the circle 
We also understood that chord is a line segment that joins any two points on the circle. Diameter is a chord that passes through the center of the circle and a sector of a circle is a region which is enclosed by an arc on one side and a pair of radii on the other sides. And a segment of a circle is enclosed by a chord on one side and an arc on the other side. And we also emphasize that the diameter divides the circle in two semicircles, that is two half circles. So this was our complete discussion on the basic geometrical ideas. See you soon in the next chapter.